Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. Our old friend, the Torx Structomatic. In order to check the efficacy of various washers, the Wise and the House. First, the Wise. Spring washers are friggin' useless. I hate the things, they should, they're legacy, but you can't get rid of them. For whatever reason, people think they're the shit. They're not the shit. They are shit. So we're going to test these out. The how, how are we going to do it? Well, there's a Yunker test. It's uh, basically you take two plates and one is free to move and you oscillate it. You vibrate it at uh, 12 hertz or 40 hertz or whatever, how many ever hertz you want to. But it's got a hell of a lot of force, like a ton and a half of force. And it's two plates with a bolted connection and you vibrate them. And then you see how quick it takes for the thing to loosen off, generally checking a nut or a bolt. In this case, we're going to do it sort of in a Rhodesian reach around roundabout sort of way. What we're going to do is we're going to tighten up fasteners and then we're going to see how much torque it takes to loosen the fastener off. First off, I've lubricated the threads and avoided lubricating the mating surfaces. We're going to just test a flat washer. This is a stand in for our steel plate that the bolt is threading into. This is a skirted uh, bolt, but so this washer looking thing is actually part of the head. So we'll go in here and torque it to 100 foot pounds and see what value that gives us. Should be right around 700. And it helps if you go the right direction. Now, because my sensor is on a field I.O., wink, wink, nudge, nudge, it's battery powered, which means that we have to sync it every time. We have to calibrate it every time. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to torque this bolt, well lubricated bolt, up to 100 foot pounds. And the baseline here is 514 millivolts. And any time now. I gotta uh, take another bite at this. There we are at steady state 100 foot pounds and dropping, and we'll very quickly swap this over, swap this guy, and then see what it breaks free at. And then compare the two. Beauty. It's like I planned it out. Okay, here's the shot of what we did. This is my first attempt at it, my second attempt to actually click it over. And we'll have, let's have a look at this one. Move that over. So this is the, whoopsie. This is the tightening torque here. 610 millivolts this peak is. And a baseline of 512 and this is the loosening off torque 564 so 6 612 is what we'll get every time for tightening it up now we get the high collar lock washer we'll get that in there we're still set at 100 on the torque wrench We'll get this guy running and slow it right down so we get time to see what's going on. So there we go, steady state on that. We'll swap her over. And loosened right off. 564 was the number to beat if I'm not mistaken. Okay, there we go. That's the torque 612 Right on the money repeatability Is there? 6 uh, 564 was the number to beat 556 556 Here's the Nordlock 
I bring her up to 100, swap her around, see what she breaks at. Vice is weeble wobbling a little bit. A little bit out of position here. Okay, we're at 100. Leveled off. We'll swap around to the other side. You get the picture. And now we will see what the breakaway torque is. Okay, well that was easy. Uh oh, I smell some crow and not cathode ray oscilloscope. Okay, this guy torqued up 616 and then broke free. At 560. What the fuck over? Interesting. Okay, here's the second test. 614 to torque it up. Same, same, only different. And then this guy, 556 five, millivolts. That's a... Uh, wow. So I wonder if it's something to do with the fact that this is flanged and hard and this nut is not mild steel. The Nordlock might need to bite in, which also invalidates our test of the spring washer. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Anytime you get a result, it's good. But especially when you get a result that answer, uh, doesn't answer any questions, it brings up more questions than it answers. Now, that's, that's proper citizen science right there. We got two Nordlocks on this plate now, and it's bearing. The Nordlocks are bearing on a mild steel plate. And we'll just get her turked up. And then we'll swap sides. Worst ratchet design ever in the history of ratchet designs. Okay, I see what's going on. It's not necessarily harder, but you've got to move through a wider berth to get over that. Yeah. Aha. To get over that serration. Let's have a look here. There you see here, it actually built up and it took me a long time. I, that thing was turning the whole time. So that's the difference less susceptible to vibration doesn't affect the breakaway torque but takes longer for that so that that's that's an interesting result one that i never would have guessed actually and that's the back side of the nut there you see how well that's been bitten and we'll try that with standard procedure high collar lock washer as well now standard procedure dictates that we put one on the nut side and then we put a flat washer on the front side so that's what I gone and done now we'll we'll have a look at that as well now we're gonna back this one off there we go Let's have a look at that I got her in a different scale here, 20 millivolts. So that guy goes up to 562. Well, that's not quite the smoking gun I was hoping for. You know, the torque is roughly the same to break it loose. It's odd though, because it feels like it's much more torque. And when it does give, it's like a, a snap. You can really feel it. Here's the arrangement, two different sets of serrations. And if you, if you don't put these together, like they're glued together, you can knock them apart. If you don't put these back together properly, uh, they ain't going to work for shit. So there's no way around it to actually test the efficacy then to do a, a Yunker test, unfortunately. This, 
this shows us that it's the same torque roughly to, to break it free. Now, these are not without their problems. These are extremely expensive and they're hard. So they do break in high vibration situations. If they break, they'll break out a section here. And then of course the fastener is loose anyway. So there's, there's drawbacks to every fastening system. This is one of those cases where they've invented something that seems to work. Unfortunately, I don't have the smoking gun to tell you yes, because I don't have a $40,000 Yunker testing machine. I wanted to show you with the gear that I got. Hold up, wait a second, wait a second. All this uh, bumble fucking around, it's stuck in my craw. Today is the morrow, by the way. It's stuck in my craw that I couldn't explain my experience, my good experience with this, with the empirical evidence that we sort of fabric cobbled together. It, it didn't make a sense. So in uh, L'Esprit de l'Escalier, or maybe in Spiritu Sancto, I deferred to a higher power. I got on the old gargler machine and, and did some research. So we see now, now I'm going to explain exactly why that, um, on the oscilloscope why that backing off torque took so long and why it feels like you're putting more energy into it. it it feels like you're pulling okay so it has to do with the actual construction on the one side of these serrations serrations so those bite in to the the basal platen and the bolt and on the inside quite a bit more um what would you say aggressive not not aggressive but bigger wedges okay and those are one-way wedges. So when you go to back that off, this has to actually expand. Now that's very important. If we look at this, when we back this off, so this is the bolt and it has a, a thread pitch angle here. You see that angle? Okay, when we back that off, say a quarter turn, it moves a certain amount according to that angle. But the angle on these inner teeth is greater so if you move this a quarter turn, it backs off a certain amount, but this actually raises up further than that amount. So in order for you to back this bolt off, you actually need to either have it slip on these serrations, which you do not want. And that's why it wasn't working when we tested it with the hardened nut and the hardened bolt. What you want is for these serrations to bite in and these serrations need to expand to click over to the next one. That means we physically need to stretch this bolt out. And that is why this works so well, because the angle here is shallower than the angle in betwixt here. And we need to stretch the bolt out in order for it to overcome this lip here, these two wedges working together to overcome this lip in order to loosen off. So we need to Essentially, we're torquing it in reverse. We're stretching the bolt out to overcome this fastener. Now, as I said, it only works when the serrations bite in. So if, you, if you're into something hard, these are not going to work.